Um, hi. About a month ago, this mob of people gathered just out there and um, with these things, ukuleles. And there were people aged 15 to 80-something. And uh, then a, a security guard came out of Newcastle City Hall and escorted us past a bunch of uh, wannabe teenagers, wannabe famous teenagers, who were all queuing up for Australia's Got Talent. I got called to, uh, for us to audition. This is the... Uh, local ukulele movement, basically, to audition for Australia's Got Talent. And many people know that show because I didn't really know much about it. Um, it's, it's secretly, it's not really the television I'd sort of watch. But it was a great experience. We went and auditioned. We, got, we went in first and we were on first. I got a call the other day that they want us to go to Sydney for the... Um, for the that's nice, that's nice. Then another... Oh, good, that works. Um, uh, two weeks later, for the ABC, thank you to the ABC, we performed at the night at the Wireless to a thousand plus people. It was just great. And um, what they saw was not virtuosity, what the people saw was, was rather shambolic, but they saw a lot of joyous rabble, I would say. So, um, yes, in case you've been living under a rock, that's a bit obscure, isn't it, that photo? Um, in case you've been living under a rock, this is a ukulele, and there is a global movement of ukulele playing. Now, Good, I'm glad it's still in tune. You've got one chord. This is a chord with one finger. With another finger, I get another chord. I put two fingers down, I get another chord. And if I go really complex with three fingers, I get, I get a whole about 80,000 pop songs. People have recognised that. Oh, wasn't that a wonderful performance? <laughs> um, <laughs> People have recognised that around the world, and for about 100 years they've done that. It's very portable. You can hide it and go to a party. You can take it to war. Um, you can, <clears throat> well, you can have a band. That band at the top, right-hand corner for you, isn't it? Ukulele Orchestra of Great Britain. Novelty band 25 years ago. Superstars today. Go and see them in March here at the Civic Theatre. That's a bit of promo for you. Um, fantastically funny band in the City Hall, not the Civic Theatre. Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam has just recently bought out an album called Ukulele Songs. Um, he's on the bandwagon. You've got Jake Shimabukuro there. He is probably the whiz kid. He is the virtuoso from Hawaii. Um, and then you've got James Hill. I personally really like James Hill because he's from Canada. There's a couple of Canadians here I know of. Um, and James comes out of the Canadian school system where the, 40 years ago they ditched the recorder, praise the Lord, and <laughs> took up the ukulele um, to teach children music. But the most wonderful aspect of this ukulele boom is, is that um, community groups and a lot of retirees have taken it up and are coming together to play music together. That boom boom, whatever, came to Newcastle uh, late 2009 when I decided that I would like to start a, um, a ukulele, well, something. I, I, I fancied myself as a community musician. And um, I could describe best what I do by saying that the, on Tuesday nights, if you come down to the Wickham Croatian Sports Club, you'll find a bunch of people having a lot of fun playing ukulele, up to 40 people. Um, they all pay me $10 each week. I'd challenge any other musician who does a gig each week to that, that they get that sort of regularity, you know, sort of community musician or just musician in the community. I'll stop that line. Um, <laughs> and oh, that's a good pause, isn't it? They come along on a Tuesday night and enjoy themselves. Initially, I taught them how to play ukulele. Now, more what I do is teach them the finer points of ukulele, but more importantly, how to arrange songs. We arrange songs together and, um, and we enjoy each other's company. There are three other groups that I personally run in the local area, up at the Bay, up at Maitland and down at the lake. There are a lot of retirees there. And on a Thursday night, there's another one that my gorgeous partner Jane runs, the West Newcastra. Um, the Tomari ukulele, or ukestra, as I like to call it, is a really good case in point. There's only five or six people there, but I get about 15, 10 to 15 people up there each Monday morning. 
And um, my business model is, okay, I've, I've got three pillars of it. I need to make a living. If I didn't make a living, I'd be working up the salt mines up the valley or, or somewhere trying to earn a crust. Um, Music is clearly part of what I need to be competent at, but also another pillar of what I do as a community musician is that I need to... Part of my success is measured in the fact that people are coming together and that there's a sense of community building. This mob up at the bay, it's a, you know, a, a geographically quite specific community, a little bit isolated. They get together on a Monday morning with me, but then during the week they will come and, um, well, they will go to each other's houses. They've made friends with each other and they'll play euchre with each other and enjoy each other's company. Um, and then they also organise to do gigs at local fates or um, fundraisers. And it's enriched, it's, in, it's contributing, contributing to the cultural richness of that area. Um, so that is a really good measure of success for me, that, that there is community building going on there without me. Maybe I can initiate it, but that's a, a very nice thing. May I please have, please pass me the golden ukulele. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this expensive piece of plastic is the golden ukulele. We went to Melbourne in February, um, a little bit over a year and a bit, I think. Yeah, this is 2000, this February, to the Melbourne Ukulele Festival and carefully engraved in texta over the spray paint is Golden Ukulele Award to the Newcastle Orchestra, and they made a slight error of you know, um, writing there. Thank you. The, um, we were judged to be tongue-in-cheek. You know, the plastic nature of that is it's a tongue-in-cheek. People recognise the fun that the ukulele is, but, um, and we have fun with it. We went to the festival and we more or less declared Gee, you guys do a really good job of playing the ukulele and having fun. I, I, that, that'll do that. Then stuff me if we don't go to Hawaii in July. <laughs> These people that I'm working with, most of them are retirees. Retirees get around. They like to go on holidays. They like focused holidays. They said, hey, we're going to go to Hawaii. Anybody want to come? Then they get invited to play at a festival in Hawaii for 10 minutes. And they said, are you coming to direct us for 10 minutes? Eventually, I was able to say yes. Um, I didn't put up that slide, so, yes. We even wore a uniform. I'm not sure, is Christine here? No, no. <laughs> it's dubious, but, you know, we, we, we enjoyed ourselves for 10 minutes. And then Betty and Ted, who are 80, went on a 10-day cruise. What a wonderful thing. We all stayed on Waikiki, some for a month. Bastards, you know. <laughs> um... The point of all these stories is not that we are fantastic players or that we've done or that we've played musically wonderful things. The point is that um, this little machine has facilitated a lot of wonderful life experiences and continues to do that. I got asked the other day by an acquaintance who was, you know, saying, Oh, what do you do? Yeah, I do the ukulele stuff. And um, she said, Oh, wow, how many really, really good people are there? Um, and I went, oh, that's not really the point. Um, I'm not even a really, really good ukulele player. The point is, um, is the community sense that is being engendered and um, enjoying ourselves and being inclusive. And I like to think of this as, as a place as well. Anybody heard of the, the idea of the third place? Now, there's a guy called Ray Oldenburg who wrote this book, and you know, thank you Starbucks for commercialising this sociological phrase. Um, but the third place, or the great good place, our first place that we have is our home. The second place that we have is our work. And the third place, anybody remember the show Cheers? You know, it was about a bar. I think that was a really classic sort of 80s. And then there was that in and the 90s was Friends, wasn't it? And, and uh, the coffee shops and Starbucks obviously took that on. You know, it's not just Starbucks, it's also ukulele. Um, I like to think of this as being our third place where you can come and be accepted. You can even, this, I'll teach you a chord. This is the Z chord. Ah, it's got rhythm, hasn't it? If you can do that, you can come along and join us. If you're willing to participate and sing your lungs out, 
Come and join us. It's, it's great. In our third place, we have all sorts of people. We have now, usually, I just take for granted that I'm putting the word retired in front of most of these words, okay? <laughs> printers. Any printers? Hey. Yeah, we've got physiotherapists. Yeah. I think we've got a copper. Yep, yep good. <laughs> we've got television news readers. Oh, he's not here. Um, <laughs> different journos. Um, we've got concrete truck drivers. Yeah. yeah, good, yeah. We've got a bunch of people, not, not necessarily, but all of the, we've got people who experience mental health and, you know, physical health issues, you know? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Could you see that set up coming? <laughs> Thank you, that was a great response. <laughs> I, um, I get people saying to me, Mark, thank you so much for, um, for doing this. You've brought um, my husband and I together, you know, a marriage counsellor. No, it's something that they have chosen to do together. Um, people who have... Anybody got scars across their knuckles from the nuns? In, in, you know, in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, maybe 80s? You play the wrong note on the piano, whack, apparently. People who were put off about music back then and are coming back to music now and going, I never thought I could play music again. You know, it's, it's, it's very heartening for me. Um, and then we've got people who are... Um, we've got people who come to it for probably more specific reasons, but also for the sense of community, because the sense of community is what makes us healthy in many ways. Um, Daisy Burr is a cabaret artist, and Daisy, aka Danielle, had a, came to Newcastle and had a very serious push bike accident, which put her in a coma for two weeks. Um, and she didn't know if she could be Daisy Burr again. And came to Euchestra and started to find that, wow, I can remember lines, I can perform again. And who'd have thought that a Euchestra could have been a rehabilitation venue? Um, yeah, so Danielle, and Danielle is now running a, a thing called Club Sandwich monthly in, in Newcastle. That's a plug, I don't know if I'm supposed to do that, Siobhan. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, it's done wonderful things for Danielle. And then um, we've got a lovely gentleman, one amongst many, but Robin, and thank you to Danielle and Robin for allowing me to share these very, stories very briefly. Um, Robin came along to ukulele and um, his wife passed away very early on in, in his involvement. And it was clear, seemed clear to me, and as Robin has told me, that he has a very supportive family, but he's got another supportive family that have helped him through those difficult times of grieving for his, his lost wife. And as you can see, he's a bit of a, a nutter, you know, sometimes. <laughs> you can be a nutter when you're doing this sort of stuff. It's, oh, it's, it's a great release. <laughs> <laughs> so this is us up at the Karua, the Karua Festival. And this is where I'm going to read because this is the impactful conclusion. Our culture seems to be lost in this, in this fascination with fame and fortune. Other people have spoken about that earlier today. Um, and this impacts quite detrimentally on our ability to make and use music as part of our everyday lives. Historically, we had, yeah, we sure we had, you know, over the eons, we had musicians of all sorts who were good musicians, but none of us were ever excluded from making music as part of our cultural life. From the folk music of the Appalachians, to the haka, to the church, to the fields of Africa, we've, over the millennia we've had um, opportunities to have music making as part of our community life. But we're now imbued, we seem to be imbued with an expectation that if you're not really, really good, then you can't do it. With this, I reckon we've lost a fair bit of our ability to celebrate with music and to express our grief and our sadness through music as a, as a community. At a TED presentation 2010 in California, the home of TED, um, Big Ted and Jemima, um, <laughs> if anybody knows that reference. Um, they won't know that reference in California. Um, Jake Shimabukuro, that, that whiz kid, um, Hawaiian ukulele artist, he played Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, look at it, it's pretty amazing. And at the beginning, he says, I've always believed that the ukulele is the instrument of peace because if everyone played the ukulele, this world would be a much happier place. Now, what, my interpretation of that is 
Clearly, we cannot all be a Jake Shimabukuro virtuoso. Instead, the ukulele gives us a good opportunity to be included in making music together. And with that, we can contribute to creating more healthy and whole individuals and communities. And as a Eucostra, I want us to be evangelical. I want us to go out there and for people to see a Eucostra and go, wow, that's great. I want to be a part of that. They're playing music. Um, we can demonstrate that we're having a rip-roaring time, but we're not virtuosos. Um, we have the chance to model non, non, that word is non, fame-focused behaviour, non-fame-focused music making, and we're a counterpoint to that cool rock star image. I'm going to demonstrate this in about 30 seconds for you. Um, we are really pretty much dags. <laughs> What's that old saying? You give a man a... Um, you give a man... No, 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 don't steal the punchline. <laughs> you give a person a record player. Now, you give a person a record player. Now, let's update it. You give a person an iPod and they can play MP3s to themselves. You give them a ukulele and they can make music with each other. Can we please play some music? <laughs> <laughs> 